Uh, by the way, just uh, want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity. It's an honor and a privilege for me just to have this time to share with you guys, just to encourage with his word. And that is what we need, especially for this season, for this time, we really need the word of God. Not only to share, not only to speak, but we really need to live the word of God. Because we ourselves, we are the image bearer of the creator, the trinity, the triune God. Yeah, and uh, before I continue, I also would like to thank uh, the youth leaders and the committee and all of you guys. Thank you so much for trusting in me and giving me this platform just to share with you his word. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like last night, I was praying because yesterday Naran just asking me if I could share with you guys. I said, okay. And I was praying last night, this morning, and I, when, I, when I did my quiet time, I reading the word, I said, God, I don't want to share out of my experience or out of my knowledge. I want to share what is in your heart for this generation, for these young people, because they are the future leaders for tomorrow. So when I see all you guys, I can see there is a leaders like in the church, leaders in the government, and that is what God predestined you guys. God created you and not only you, all of us to be a great leaders because we are born to be great. And that's something God laid in my heart, just to encourage you guys, even in this pandemic, even in the situation that we are facing right now. But one thing that we should know, God, he already won the victory on our behalf. His victory, that is our victory. I remember first Cornelius chapter one, chapter two, verse 34, it says, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So once you have Christ in you, you have all this. You have the wisdom and also you have the power of God. Power to overcome whatever obstacle that will come along your way. Amen. And that is our God, who God is. Our God is all powerful. His omniscience, which is he knows your heart. He know even, even he know myself. I'm sitting here. And he also knows. Where are you at right now? Spiritually, physically, and mentally. What, what are you lacking on? God knows it. And I believe in my heart that his word, it will help us. It will encourage us. Amen? Even the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, it says, encourage each other and build each other up. And that is who we are as a body of Christ. We need to encourage and build each other with his word. Not with our mind, not with our knowledge, not with our experience, but with the word of God. That's why we need each other. As a body of Christ, we need each other. We need to hear the word of encouragement because that is what we need. Even in the church in our days, that's something that is lacking in the church. Just to encourage, encourage each other, encourage our brothers and our sisters. Because we did not know what are they going through emotionally, physically, spiritually. But when we have that confidence, when we have that power, Christ in us, we able to share whatever things laid in our heart just to encourage your brothers and your sisters. So let's jump to the word. I just want to read this uh, chapter um, in the book of Joshua, chapter one, only eight verse I would like to share with us. And at the same time, I was just thinking that today is the last day of this month. Tomorrow is the first day of a new month. I was just preparing a, a message from just this morning. Before I came and sit here, God just revealed this to me. I said, wow. And God said, you have to speak on this. The life of Joshua and the new generation. Okay, I just want to read uh, Joshua 1, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, a Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, you, your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, 
all the Hittite country to the Great Sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from, from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, and that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. I know that this is a well-known story in the Bible, very familiar. We all know the story about Moses as Moses, he is the one who leading the Israelites. So Joshua, he is the one who replaced Moses. And before they continue with his journey to the promised land, as we know, that is what God, he predestined them, the promised land. That is their destination. And Moses, he, he, he is the one who gave all his trust to Joshua, not only Moses, but God himself. In this chapter, the first chapter, it's all about the introduction. God himself, he commissioned Joshua for this great task, for this work. And then he remind him and he uh, command him what to do in order to be, to be prosperous, in order to reach their destination. And as I'm reading all this, thinking about today is the last day and tomorrow is the new day. And this is something that God want all of you guys just to encourage you how important to rely on his word how important to meditate on his word even joshua if you read down in verse 3 he says i will give you every place where you set your foot as i promised moses your territory will extend from the desert to lebanon and from the great river the euphrates all the heated county to the great sea on the west no one will be able to stand up against you. So this is all the word that God, he remind Joshua. This is not Joshua what he's going to do, but this is what God is going to do with Joshua. Because without God, Joshua, he couldn't able to fulfill this promise. He couldn't even able to lead his people right to the promised land. And all these passages is talking about God himself the creator of this universe, He's, he remind Joshua what to do. And goes down in verse 8, that is the key verse in verse 8. And he said, do not let this book of the law. So this is the key victorious life of Joshua. In order for him to cross the Jordan River, in order for him to defeat these 31 kings, in order for him to destroy Jericho, the only thing he have to do is to meditate and memorize the word of God. So for us, especially for this generation, and even Joshua, this is a new generation. Joshua lead the new generation. Most of them, they died on the wilderness because of their disobedience, because of uh, uh, when, when God, he sent this to Joshua and the 12 with the 10, when they came back, when they report, when they are uh, going and, uh, and look the land, and when they came back, the 10, they came up with a negative, all negative report. But the two, they came up with a positive report. And they are with God. And God, he told Moses in front of the crowd, in front of the Israelites, all these 10 and all their, their descendants, none, none of them will enter the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. And then it is amazing to see all this generation, the old generation, they died in the, in, the, on, in the wilderness. But the new generation, so Joshua, he led this new generation into the promised land. And I was just thinking, even for us young people, we are the new generation for this age. We need to raise up a man like Joshua, a woman like Joshua, who have that courage, who have that faith, that can move the mountain, whatever obstacle that will come along your way, you will able to say yes 
because God is the confidence of our life. God is the strength of our life. And that's something that I would like to encourage you guys. Um, uh, I don't know whatever things that you are facing right now. I don't know whatever struggling, but I believe in my heart. Only if you know who God is as Joshua, if you look at Joshua, the life of Joshua, he, he know who God is. He know how to hear the voice of God. He know how to act upon God's word. He know what to do because he know his God. And I believe this is a challenge for us. It is important to know who God in our life. It is important to know who God, even in every situation that we face in our everyday life, once you know who God is, you can able to go through whatever obstacle, whatever circumstances, whatever difficulties that come along your way. Because God, our God is a great God. The Bible tells us every other God is an idol, but our God is a true living God. And your promise and his promise for all of us, it will come to pass. He, his promise never fail us. But many times for us, we fail. But our God, he never failed us. He never forgot us because his promise for us is everlasting. And his promise will come to pass. As we're looking at the life of Joshua and the young people and the young generation, the new generation, how important Joshua direct them to God. For them, in order for them to fulfill God's promise, they need to obey God's word. They need to have faith, to have faith in his word. I remember in the book of Hebrew, it says, Hebrew 11, 66, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how important in this season to walk with faith, believe. And that is my prayer. God will increase your faith. God will increase our faith. The faith like Joshua. Because he knew he can do all this. He can face all this with his own strength, with his own knowledge. He needs to rely on God. He needs to, to depend on God. He needs to fix his eyes on God because he is the author of life. He is the author of everything in our life. Amen. And the last thing I would like to share with you guys in, the, in verse 8, in verse 8, as I mentioned earlier, this is a key verse in this chapter. Do not let this book of the law Depart from your mouth, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, then you will be prosperous and successful in life. As I mentioned earlier, guys, this is the key victorious of our everyday life. The word of God, the word of God. I remember Psalm 119, verse 9, it says, how can a young man keep his way pure? And it says in the second line, it says, by living according to his command. Amen. That is the word of God. If we live according to the word of God, you know, the word of God itself, it will purify us. It will cleanse us and make us the person that God wants want us to be. Not the way that we want, we want, not the church thing that we want to be. No, the way that God wants us to be. Because God, he created you to be like him. He created all of us to be like him. Even though we are living in this planet Earth, but God, he entrusted you. God, he trusts you to do his work here on Earth. And that is your responsibility, our responsibility as a body of Christ, to walk together in unity, believing and trust him in everything. Even Joshua, he continued to trust God. At the end of his chapter of this book, uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 24, I love that when he called all the Israelites, he was old and he knew that his time is about to end, his leadership, and he encouraged them to leave their, the God that their forefathers used to serve in the other side of the river, like, like the, the God they, they used to serve before, their old generation. And he said, just choose whatever God that you would like to serve. But for me and my family, we will serve the Lord Almighty. And I believe that is a challenge for all of us. We need to serve God with the whole of our being, with spirit, with our mind, and with our soul. In everything we do, we need to serve God faithfully in everything we do. 
because that is part of worship. When you're talking about worship, worship in everything we do, we must do in the attitude, the motive that God is in us because God, he lives in us. We are his dwelling place. We are his tabernacle. We are his temple. I'm not talking, when I'm talking about the temple, I'm not talking about the church that built by men. I'm talking about the church that built by God and that is you and me. So how important to walk according to his word? How important to live according to his word? So that's why we need his Holy Spirit. Even Joshua, before uh, he replaced Moses, going back uh, in the book of Numbers, it says that Joshua, he is the man spirit filled. He was led by the spirit. No wonder the eyes of God was upon Joshua. And from there, God, he already appointed him to be his next leader. So how important for us in this generation, we need to be led and to be filled and to be empowered by the spirit of God. Because the spirit, once we led by the spirit of God, we exactly do the same thing that God wants us to do. So in order for us to fulfill God's will, God's plan, God's purpose, we need to be led by his spirit. I remember Paul, when he was writing to the church in Cornelius, he said, you, 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 you couldn't even understand this because you don't have the spirit of God. Once you have the spirit of God, you will understand what I'm trying to tell you. It's, isn't that amazing? You know, that's why we need to be led by the spirit because the spirit of God, this is the only way that will connect us to the throne room of God. And he is the one who will reveal to us what to do, what not to do, where to go, not to go in everything we do, in every decision we make. Once we led by the spirit of God, he will help us and give us the confidence to make choice, confident to make decision because our choice and our decision, it will determine our destiny. Even our choice, it will define who we are. So once we led by the spirit and we make then we will make decision right. Then we will go to the right place, doing the right thing, doing the right time, at the right time. Amen. Yeah, that's something that I would like to leave you on right now. My prayer, even in the church, even in this young generation, that God will raise up a man like Joshua to lead the way. Amen. A woman like Joshua, a young people like Joshua who can stand with his faith and trust in God in everything. Just the last thing I would like to share with you guys. How important to trust God. Six important things. Why do we have to trust God? Sometimes you have that kind of question. But I would like to, to encourage us with six things. Very important. Why do we have to trust God? Even Joshua. He totally put his trust in God. No wonder why he fulfilled the promise of God. And that is the, 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 the promised land. Able to lead these young people or the young generation or the new generation into the promised land. Six things. Number one, why we should have to trust God because he knows you by your name. Because God the creator, he knows you. Even before you form in, the, in your mother's womb, God, he already appointed you. God, he already predestined you. God, he already planned for you. Even for this time. I didn't know that one day I will share with you guys. I didn't know. But this is something that God, he already predestined. This is something that God, that he already planning before it happened. That is number one. Why we should have to trust God? Because he knows you by your name. And number two, why do we have to trust God? Because he will fight for you. Amen. We have to trust God because he will fight for you. Because it says, the story about Joseph, Joseph, God, he spoke to this, uh, to this man and he told Joseph, and he prophesied to Joseph, and he said, the battle is not yours, the battle is mine. The only thing you have to do, you have to position yourself. So how do you position yourself? We have to position ourselves in his word. We have to position ourselves with Christ. Paul said, I am no longer live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. So why do we have to trust God? Number two, because he will fight for you. He know what are you going to face tomorrow. He know what is ahead of you. Because he is omniscient God. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. He is 
presence is everywhere. He is all knowing. He know your future. He know your presence, and he know your past. That is number two. And number three, why do we have to trust God? Because He thinks about you. You know where we were created. We created in the mind of God. It says in the book of Ephesians one four, even before the creation of the universe, God He already appointed you. So you are already here in the mind of God before He created the whole universe. Isn't that beautiful? God Himself, the Creator, He thinks of you every day of your life. Just think about yourself. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you wake up in the morning? Phone. You want to see what what is the new notification? What is the new message that's coming up? But think about God. The first thing He thinks, and that is you. But for us, sometimes, as soon as you wake up in the morning, we just want to see our phone. We want to check. What is the new message? It's coming. <laughs> but God, you are the, you are His priority, because you are special, because you are unique. And number four, why do we have to trust God? Because He has a greater plan in your life. It says in the book of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, "For I alone knows the plans I have for you." So God alone, He knows what is best for you. And He will provide exactly. So when God calls you, God will provide for you. Amen. And number five, why do we have to trust God? Or what is the reason why we have to trust God? Because He is our refuge. In times of trouble, God is our refuge. And number six, the last thing, why do we have to trust God? Because He is always there with you. Amen. So whatever situation, obstacle that you face in life, when you learn to trust God, I just want to remind you. I just want to remind you in this verse. It says, in the book of Psalms 118, I think verse six and seven. Somewhere on the, on that passage, it says, "The Lord is with me; I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me; He is my help. I will look in triumph on my enemies." So that is the last point, the reason we have to trust God because He is always with us. He is always there with you. Amen. So even for us, just uh, even our, our our time, our Zoom meeting today, I believe in my. Even I'm sharing this, I can feel the presence of God. I can feel His presence. I can feel His Holy Spirit. I can feel His anointing. He's here with us. And that's something that I would like to leave on you guys for that six things. Important to trust God because He know you. He knows everything about your life. He knows everything about your future, your future husband, your future wife. God knows it. The only thing you have to do, you have to trust Him, because God He created you to trust Him. No one thinks only God alone. He created you to trust Him alone. Because he is the only source in this world. But many times we fall short in the glory of God because of some of the things, some of the decisions we make. It doesn't mean that is not okay. No, that is part of the process. We will fail. Amen. We will cry. But it doesn't mean that God is is forsaken us or forgotten us. No. You are. Already in the mind of God, God He always think of you every day of your life. Even sometimes you forgot to pray in the morning, but God He never forgot you any time, any moment. He always think of you, so He never fail you. Why? Because you are special. Because you are the best. Even people says you are the second. Even people sometimes when things happen in life, they tend to point fingers at you. They tend to say negative words about you. But our God, in His eyes, you are the best. You are not second best. You are the first best. So God bless you guys. I just want to pray for you before before I give it to Naran. Amen. Are you guys okay? Are you guys blessed with the word? <laughs> okay. I just want to pray for you. Yeah, I can feel the presence of God. I can feel His Holy Spirit is here right now. Like I've mentioned earlier. God knows your heart. God knows your struggle. 
God know what are you going through right now. I'm telling you, it's come on the way. Hanging on there, hold on there. Have faith in God and trust him, in him because his promise for us is everlasting. So let us pray. Let's just pray. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. I just want, I, I, I felt strongly from God just to pray for all of you guys because I believe you are all leaders for tomorrow. You are a future leaders in the church, in the government because you will make the change. You will bring transformation in this nation. That is what God has appointed you to be. Yes, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your wonderful presence. We thank you for your divine visitation. We thank you for your, for your presence in this room, God. As your word says, two, three, mention your name, you will be present. Exactly, we can feel your presence right now. Father, we pray, God, as I pray for, for, for all our brothers and sisters, God. Father, I pray, God, that you will meet all their needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Spiritually, physically, mentally. Father, I thank you, God, that your promise for us is everlasting. Despite all the situation that we're going through in life, Father, your love for us never fails. Any time, any minute, any second, any hour. You're always chasing after us. You're always there for us, God. You're always with us in everything, in every situation, God. Father, I thank you, God, for this wonderful opportunity as you have been encouraging us, God, to totally trust on you. As David, as a Joshua, God, you appointed him, God, to lead your people to the promised land. And I thank you, God, for this Joshua that they are listening right now, God, that you have been appointed them, God, to be a great leader that will transform the community, transform the whole nation of Nepal, God. Father, I thank you that your eyes is upon each and every one of them. No matter how old they are, no matter their age, no matter what problem they're going through, Father, we thank you that out of all the things they're going through, Father, you will do something great, something better out of it. As we believe in Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Father, help us and help each and every one of us to continue to avail ourselves because you are God, you are able. You are God of able. And you're able to help us. You're able to take us through God in every situation that we face in life. Father, I speak blessing. I speak life over their life that they will be continue to meditate and memorize your word and think of you, God. Even in everything that they face in life, Father, the first thing that they come to mind is your presence. They think, they think of you. They think of you, God. They will think on your presence, how you have been brought them, the process they have been going through, God. Father, I thank you, God, that you will help them, God, and you will increase their faith and obedience to say yes to you, despite the situation that they're going through. Father, I thank you for this time. We give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Sabila Jaimasi. <laughs> Thank you so much.